Sugar has been characterized as being as dangerous as tobacco or alcohol. Last night, TVO brought you the documentary Sugar Coated, which examined the role sugar has in our diets and how that is affecting our health. We've invited Laura Pasut, the Director of Nutrition with the Canadian Sugar Institute, to give us the industry's perspective on the role of sugar in the modern diet. And Laura, we're happy to welcome you to TVO. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, the Canadian Sugar Institute, what mm. is that? We are a nonprofit organization that's in the business of communicating science-based information to health professionals in the public. And we're composed of primarily health professionals. There's dietitians as well as researchers on staff. Is it a lobby group? It's not a lobby group. So you don't lobby government? We don't. We, we will give comments like everybody else, but we don't lobby. Okay. And what do you do there? I am director of nutrition. What does that mean? Um, I oversee the nutrition information service. So that service um, does communication as well as review the literature and the science and try to use that information to communicate to health professionals primarily, but also the public. And what's your background? My, I'm a dietitian. You are? Okay. Yes. Where'd you go to school? The University of Toronto. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> uh, director of nutrition mm -hmm. for a group that represents sugar. You know, some people are going to say, that's kind of an oxymoron. How, how would you respond to that? Well, I think it's important to remember that um, sugar is an ingredient in many foods and um, all foods are part of a healthy diet. So we have to kind of put things into perspective. And so it's important to look at what the research is on sugars and on carbohydrates and see how it fits into a healthy diet. Okay. Last night we run, ran this documentary, mm -hmm. Sugar Coated, and um, there was nobody representing the sugar industry or your organization in mm -hmm. the documentary. So we thought it would be important to get the other side of the story mm -hmm. on tonight, which is why you're here. Um, so let's, uh, I'm not going to make the assumption that everybody saw this documentary. Some of our viewers tonight may not have. So mm -hmm. we're going to play an excerpt from it right now and then we'll come back and chat, okay? Okay. All right, roll tape, please. Here's what's happened to your food over the last 30 years. 1982 to 2012, meats down 10% because we were all told to go low fat. Fruits and vegetables, exactly the same. We're all told we don't eat enough fruits and vegetables. You know what? We're eating just as much as we always did. And finally, processed foods and sweets, 11.6, 22.9%, a doubling in the span of 30 years. That's where the food dollars have gone. And as we've allowed it, we've gotten sicker and sicker. Of all the packaged foods in the grocery store, 74% of them are spiked with added sugar. Salad dressing, barbecue sauce, tomato sauce, hamburger buns, hamburger meat, all sorts of things. Also, there are 56 names for sugar. Sucrose, table sugar, cane sugar, beet sugar, high fructose corn syrup, agave, maple syrup, honey, so the food industry can hide the sugar that they add to any given food in plain sight because no one knows what they are. Bottom line, they're all the same. Gallery for calorie, gram for gram, ounce for ounce, they're all the same. And they all do the exact same thing and they all overload your liver and they all cause liver fat accumulation when consumed in excess. Now, remember, it's about excess. It's not about, quote, moderation. So then you have to define what's moderation. Moderation is six to nine teaspoons of added sugar per day. That's moderation. That's what the American Heart Association says. The World Health Organization just said up to 12 teaspoons of added sugar per day. But Europe is consuming 17 teaspoons of added sugar per day. And America is at 19.5 teaspoons of added sugar per day. Bottom line, we're consuming it in excess and it's causing chronic metabolic disease because of it. That's from Sugar Coated. Mm -hmm. A lot to unpack there. Obviously, mm -hmm. I want to get your initial reaction to what you just saw, and then we'll delve more deeply. Um, well, first of all, um, the information presented was from the United States, and Canada is quite different from the United States. So our consumption of sugar is 11% of calories or energy here in Canada, and that is just... It, not that different from what the World Health Organization has identified as the 10% recommendation. So we're at 11% for added sugars. So that's about, I would say, 14 
teaspoon, 13, uh, 12 teaspoons, thir no, it'd be 12 teaspoons would be a, uh, 10%. So this would be about 14 teaspoons. 14 teaspoons, mm -hmm. and six to nine is considered moderate. Well, the World Health Organization is indicating 12 teaspoons as being moderate. So we're just above that. Around that. Yes, and you have to remember that that information was from um, data collected in the early 2000s that um, the Government of Canada did a consumption study called the Canadian Consumer Health Survey. And in that, um, that's the, the data is from that time. Since that time, um, sugars intake has been declining. Currently, the Government of Canada is now collecting consumption data again, so I'm really anxious to see what they will just, um, come out with. When in will terms we know that information? They're collecting it through the uh, 2015, so from January to December. So over the next couple of years, they should have the data out. Okay, check the monitor again, because we're going to be, you provided us a chart with Canadian versus mm -hmm. American uh, su sugar consumption uh, habits. Mm -hmm. and. Yes, we're, I mean, that's the green line is us and the blue line is the United States, so we are below them. Mm -hmm. Having said that, uh, you know, are we enough below them to be healthy? We've seen stories from the United States all the time about, you know, significant obesity problems they have there compared to, to where we are. Are we that much better than they are? Well, I wouldn't say we're that much better because we do also have an obesity problem in Canada. It's a very serious and complex problem that we have here. And so, um, although our intakes of sugars is lower than the United States, doesn't mean that our um, chronic disease rates are drastically different. We, there may be other factors involved. And so do we have a problem with sugar in this country? I would say no, only because our average intake is 11%. However, that's not to say that there aren't portions of the population who consume too much, too much of everything. Mm -hmm. So including sugar. How much sugar do you have? In my diet? Yeah, in your daily diet. I have no idea. <laughs> I try to eat a healthy diet and uh, certainly sugar is part of it. I'm trying to get my head around this because mm -hmm. I probably eat as much bad sugar as anybody. <laughs> I love chocolate. But if you have fruit juice, for example, mm -hmm. you're getting sugar in fruit juice, but it's not necessarily natural. It's added after the fact. And I presume that's not good for you. No, that's incorrect. So 100% okay. fruit juice has the exact same sugars that are in your orange. The difficulty is that you're not getting the fiber when you're having juice. You are still getting the vitamins and minerals that might be in an orange, and you're getting the sugars that are in that orange, but you're not getting the fiber. So that's the difference between fruit juice and a fruit. So when schools, for example, as many are doing now, mm -hmm. are taking the, uh, you know, the, the fruit, the, the, never mind they got the soda pop out already. Mm -hmm. They want to go after the fruit juices now and mm -hmm. take the fruit juice vending machines out of schools. Is that a mistake? Um, I, there is no evidence, um, when you look at the totality of evidence, there's no evidence that having some fruit juice is harmful. So, um, Some being the key word. That's right. I think everything in moderation is a key component of our diet. And um, eliminating a healthy source of some vitamins and minerals and energy, I'm not sure is the uh, correct way to go. Here's another chart that you provided us. Mm -hmm. Sheldon, can we bring this one up as well? And this is added sugar consumption and obesity rates in Canada mm -hmm. from 94 to 2013. What's the significance of starting this chart in 1994? There, uh, there isn't. That's how far we've gone back. We have some that has gone further back um, in terms of trying to collect data. So that just happens to be um, the data from Table 104 in Stats Can at Statistics Canada. Because the, the sugar consumption presumably would have started to enter our diets sort of 60s, 70s, 80s, and then in the 90s, it starts to manifest itself. Is that uh, fair possibly, to say? Possibly, possibly. Possibly. Well, I, I'm not a expert in um, chronic disease, so I don't really know kind of the actual timeline that um, a factor may impact occurrence of chronic disease. Okay, I guess the comparison I'm trying to make is that, uh, for example, if, um, if people started, I'm just pulling this out of, mm -hmm. if people started smoking in 1960, mm -hmm. you would not see by December of 1960 cancer rates going off the charts. Mm -hmm. It would take until 
the mid-60s or the late 60s or the 70s before you started to see that. And I'm wondering if that's what that chart reflects, a delayed response to a much more significant intake of sugar in our diets. Well, I think it's difficult to say whether there, could, if there is one food that is um, the cure of everything or one food is to, or ingredient is to blame for everything. And I think that's very difficult because if you look at correlations of all different foods or ingredients, you'll see a variety of different directions. And so identifying one over another is a very difficult thing to do and um, not very scientifically based. Let's show another clip now. This once again from the documentary. Mm -hmm. Let's roll it, please, Sheldon. Diet and weight related illness, they're crippling healthcare. And I have no doubt that this system will collapse. There's no way we will be able to sustain our current level of healthcare with the growing burden of diet and weight related illnesses, especially type 2 diabetes, which really, the, the cost of that is already staggering, and we're just at the tip of our iceberg. I don't think people have had an epidemic loss of willpower. I think that we are normal human beings living in an environment that pushes calories and sugar upon us. Reaction? In terms of um, whether our healthcare dollars are, or whether, like, can you be specific? <laughs> Well, uh, sure. I, uh, I was yeah. making it open-ended and allowing yeah, you to I mean, I, I, comment I, I know you Dr. Want, Friedhoff, and, and... What do you think of him? Um, I think that, um, you know, he has a particular viewpoint, and I respect his viewpoint. Is he right? I don't necessarily think that um, we can blame one ingredient for our health care costs and our health care issues at this point in time. There isn't enough evidence to suggest that. That's not to say that our environment, whether it's uh, foods, our walkability, our exercise, there are so many factors in our environment, our genetics, other things, our lifestyle, the way, work we do. There are so many factors that influence our health that it's very hard to pinpoint one. Uh, of course, mm -hmm. but is it fair to say that we'd be healthier as a society if we all, lay, if we all ate less refined sugars? The evidence doesn't directly pinpoint to that. Okay, but you have a kind of healthcare slash medical mm -hmm. background. Mm -hmm. So do the doctors in the documentary. There's kind of no skin in the game for them to, to sort of badmouth sugar because um, they're making oodles of money from the competitors of sugar or any of those kinds of things, mm -hmm. you know? I presume they're saying it because they believe it and they feel there is evidence to support their position. There are a variety of studies some that will um, show one perspective, others that show a different. And that's why it's important to look at all of them together. And sometimes what I'm, I find in um, documentaries like that is that they're wanting to take a particular slant, so they're only looking at certain things. And that's, I think, what's happened. But the sugar industry funds your institute, right? The um, sugar cane and sugar beet industry. So it's really just the sucrose. Okay, mm -hmm. so... They fund, fair, but it's an arm's length. They're not part of... Yeah, but fair-minded people are going to say, well, mm -hmm. they're funding you. Of course, you're going to take their side in things. You're going to be supportive of a position that sugar doesn't do damage to you. That's a fair assumption, isn't it? It may be an assumption, but it's incorrect. You don't think it's not, it's not true? I don't think it's true, no. I, I, you know, I, I'm a registered dietitian, and I belong to both the College and Dietitians of Canada, and I feel very proud of that. Okay, one more clip. Sheldon, number three, please. Let's go. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what I think the food industry can do. It's actually quite straightforward. I think the food industry could stop talking about no sugar being added to things. This particular product, it looks a lot like Twizzlers. It says no sugar added, and yet it has more sugar than actual Twizzlers. I think the food industry could stop suggesting that grape juice is good for you. It says no added sugar ever, yet every single glass has ten and a half teaspoons of the stuff. That's the same amount as you'd get if you drank a quarter glass of maple syrup each and every day. This product, a breakfast replacement, contains nine and three quarter teaspoons of sugar per glass. Give your kid one of these a day for a year and you'll give them 31 pounds of sugar. 
Does the industry have to do a uh, more honest job in labeling? Well, I think our labels do tell us information. We have on the back of our labels in the Nutrition Facts panel, it tells us how many total sugars that are in a product. The products they actually showed, like the grape juice, um, does not have added sugar. It's naturally occurring sugars that are in the fruits that have been extracted. So there isn't anything incorrect with that. Um, it's just not good for you. Uh, in, large excess. in excess, you're absolutely right. In excess, it's not good for you. Um, the other thing that's on the label that tells you is a list of ingredients. It tells you the, the various types of sweeteners that are in the product in descending order of quantity. And yes, there are sometimes claims like the no sugar added. Um, the difficulty with a no sugar added claim or any claims is that there are certain criteria that companies have to follow. And those are based on the regulations set by Health Canada. Uh, there's a move afoot in some jurisdictions to put a kind of a special tax or a surtax mm -hmm. on soda pop, fruit juices, uh, mm -hmm. stuff with a lot of sugar in it. What do you think of that idea? Well, I'm not a tax expert, so I can't really kind of comment on the taxation per se. However, um, right now in the literature, there isn't um, enough data to show evaluation of the effectiveness of taxing certain products and hoping for a certain health outcome. So that hasn't been demonstrated in the scientific literature. So I really can't say whether it would be effective or not. Do you think currently. the food industry would be open to more regulation on their products? In terms of quantities? Quantities, ingredients they put in. I noticed a lot of, um, that, you know, they're taking a lot of the trans fats out of foods mm -hmm. now. Make, you know, maybe more rigorous standards on advertising, that type of thing. You know, I think it's difficult because sugar is a natural product. And so that in itself is a difficult thing to control when you're using milk products, you're using uh, fruits or vegetable sources. That all provides natural sugars that are exactly identical to the sugar that is added to food. So it's very difficult to distinguish. Um, I think, um, you know, uh, manufacturers will respond to what consumers want. Mm -hmm. Laura Passard, it's good of you to come into TVO Thank tonight. Thank you so much for inviting us. Representing the Canadian Sugar Institute. She's the Director of Nutrition there. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit supporttvo.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.